Yum, yum! Greg here from Pixel Fondue, along with Baby Groot, going to make some metallic materials in Octane Render for Moto. So let's get going. I have my Baby Groot mask here, and it's just got those standard Moto white plasticky materials, so I'm going to add an Octane Override. And right off the bat, that's going to translate this white plasticky Moto material into the equivalent Octane material. So that's a Octane glossy material with this white color fed into Diffuse. Now, since we're making a metal, there's four primary channels I want to focus on. Diffuse, Specular, Roughness, and last but very much not least, Index of Refraction, or also known as Index. I don't know why they don't put IOR or something like that on here, but Index it is. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is take our white uh, color and unhook it. No more white color. I'm going to select the gloss material and turn Diffuse all the way down to zero, just like that. Because really, metals don't really have a diffuse component. They're all about reflectivity. And speaking of reflectivity, we're going to then take this white material here, or white color, and plug it into the specular component of this octane glossy material. Now you'll see that sheen on there. That's what we're going to be dealing with. And here's where you pick the type of metal you want. Copper, gold, aluminum, stainless steel. That type of metal is coming from the color hooked up to the specular channel. So let me demonstrate. Clicking on the color here. What's cool about Moto is it comes with a bunch of metal presets built in. So now you may have your Moto color picker set up like this, like, uh, you know, it's probably on grid and probably has a bunch of colors in there. What you want to do is go down to metals and then you'll probably want to go to browser mode from grid to list. And not only do we have the colors, but we also have a nice little label there. That's the name of the uh, metal. So if I scroll down to copper, for instance, I now have this nice coppery sheen on uh, Baby Groot, but it doesn't really look like a metal yet. So there's two more things we need to work with. One is roughness, and one is index, index of refraction. So you'll notice it's at 1.5, which is a nice sort of plasticky index of refraction, but we need a metallic index of refraction. Now, in the real world, different metals, copper, gold, aluminum, they all have different indexes of refraction. But in the octane world, or the world of octane rendering, they all have an index of refraction of one. So all metals have an index of refraction of one in octane. That's the single most important thing you have to do when making a metal. And you see right off the bat, he suddenly looks like copper instead of just this sort of coppery muddy thing he was before. Now, index does go up as high as, let me just turn it back to 1.5. Now this is sort of the standard index of refraction, right? For a plastic or something. If I turn this up to eight, that's as high as it goes in octane. I do get a fair amount of sheen there. It's starting to look much more metallic. In fact, that looks kind of like a dirty copper, or sort of a, a, a grungy, dirty uh, metal. And that may actually be a good way for you to um, make a metal in some circumstances. But really, if you're truly making a metal, you turn it to one. And the next thing we have to do is adjust the roughness. This will give us the sort of quality of the metal. So roughness, of course, if I go to zero, that gives us the perfectly mirror finish, a highly polished copper, right? That's the roughness of zero. If I go the opposite direction, do a roughness of one, it is super matte, almost like somebody laboriously scrubbed Baby Groot with a ball of steel wool and introduced millions and millions of little micro scratches which have scattered the light, giving this matte appearance. So metals generally are gonna be in between the two more on the zero uh, side, right? So if I go to point two, that's not mere reflections. There's a fair amount of roughness going on in there, but it's, it looks much more like copper in the real world, where if I go to zero, not so much. Now keep in mind this uh, roughness isn't really linear. If I go to point five, it doesn't really seem like half shiny, half rough. It just seems really pretty rough, right? So if you want um, you know, a fair amount of uh, crispness to your metals, keep it pretty low. That's 0.2. You know, 0.1 is probably better. Oftentimes, if I want something really um, you know, shiny metal, I'll have it like 0.01 or something like that. So you can also go to the uh, fractions, of, uh, fractions of a fraction to the hundredths. So I'm going to go 0.1. Looks pretty good. And that is our basic uh, baby Groot there. Now keep in mind the type of metal is determined by the specular component here. So if we wanted to say go with gold, all I would have to do is change the color there. Now we've got a gold Groot. I can make it a little bit warmer if I want, you know, however you want to do it, but everything else should really kind of stay the same. We're just changing the type of metal. 
can also make this a stainless steel. For instance, stainless steel, I like to have a little bit more blue in it. So here I've got just a, you know, about the same green and, and red components, but just a tad higher in blue. That's how I like to do my stainless steel. I want to lower the roughness even more. Those are the different types of metal you can do with the specular color. So I'm going to change this back to copper. And we're going to take a look at both the environment settings and the camera settings because they can have a pretty, whoops, they can have a pretty dramatic effect on your image as well. So metals, as we have said before, are basically reflecting everything. So the basic look of the metal is coming from reflections. And in this case, the reflections are coming from an HDR image map. This particular HDR has sort of a key light over here with this sort of bluish purplish tint to it and a backlight again with this bit of a bluish purplish tint. Seeing that it looks like a parking garage or something. So it's got a few more lights here and some interesting shapes. You can see that key light on this side of Groot's face. And I can rotate that around to get a very different looking metal. So I can do that two ways. I can do it in here with the in, uh, environment node. I can both up the intensity. So crank up the intensity for some hotter reflections. And I can also select the uh, texture locator of that HDR image and you know, change the rotation amount here if I want to do, let's say, uh, a completely different um, lighting, moving the lighting to the completely other side of his face, right? So you can do it over there or you can, I can turn this back to zero. Let me just put everything back the way it was. I could also do it within Octane. So I can click the little environment button there and tear that panel off. You notice Octane's rotation is 180 degrees by default uh, different than Moto. So it's just the way they map the texture between the two programs. So I can turn this back to, if I want it back on the other side of his face, I can turn that back to like five or so. And I've got those reflections over here. You can also and click off use Moto environment power and bump that up here. It's a little bit brighter, a little bit too bright. If I look at my white ball here, that's blown out. So let me go back down and I'm going to keep it rotated over here and I'm going to look at the camera now. So the camera, let me get rid of the environment panel. Camera panel has some options that we can use. So the exposure, again, we can do this, both the exposure and the environment uh, power. You may want to do that in post-production. So once you render a high bit depth image, like a 16-bit ping or an EXR, you could just go and adjust the exposure in Photoshop or After Effects or whatever you use. But here, you can also do it in camera, even if you just want to test things out, you can do this stuff in camera. Um, also, the white point comes into play. So again, this little white ball here, if I select this little clear eyedropper and click on this, I'll get the material. You'll notice this is just a octane glossy material with a white color. This ball is supposed to be white, right? So if I go over here to this sort of rainbow dropper, that's my white balance. If I click on this, I'm telling octane that this ball is white. So it's going to look at the color of this ball that's been tinted by the lighting and it's going to remove that tint from the scene. So I click on this guy, it's going to neutralize the lighting and it will change the color of that copper because the copper is being tinted by that bluish purplish HDR. Click and you'll see that this went to gray, the white went to sort of this whitish gray and the copper looks different, it looks a bit warmer. And that's because if I go to my imager here, you'll notice this sort of purplish bluish white point here has been filtered out of the image. You also notice that, you know, my ball here, well, it's supposed to be white, but the brightest part of the ball isn't quite white. So normally you would want that. So I bump up my exposure a little bit. You want to get the uh, whitest part of the ball to be white. Now, programs like V-Ray have really nice color sampling tools that will tell you what the pre and post exposure settings of those colors are. Octane doesn't quite have that yet. I'd really wish it did. Uh, maybe they'll put that in one of the updates. Give us a little bit of numerical feedback so we know exactly what values we're dealing with. And it's okay to have these sort of blown out, you know, copper bits here. That's, it's a metal, right? There's parts that are going to be blown out and it's a little more dramatic image. Um, or you can also rotate the environment around a little more if you don't like it quite as blown out like that. So I can turn this back to, oh, let's say negative 25 to sort of get that key around the edge a little bit. And so we have more of a warmer copper in here. Okay, so there's Baby Groot, all nice and, you know, lit and color balanced. And let me just bring up this uh, palette here. There he is at 1080. So there's your basic metal. So diffuse to zero. Specular is the color of specular is the type of metal you're going to use, like gold or copper, whatever. 
and index of refraction to one, and then roughness, you know, somewhere, you know, that's really going to determine the quality of the metal, whether it's very scratchy and matte or very polished and shiny. Now we can, of course, add image maps to this as well. So I'm going to add some normal maps and some roughness maps to uh, this metal, and we're going to get, you know, some different looks here. So let me just pause and move on to that. Okay, so I'm going to add some maps to this guy. I just want to show a little trick. Scooch this over, here's your baby Groot. This guy has no UVs. You see it's sort of a mess there. I believe it was a scan. So it has no UV map. We have to use projections to map images on it. So it's much easier to add projections in Modo and then add an octane override and have all those coordinates translated to the octane material than to try to set up projections within the octane nodal interface down here. So what I mean is I'm going to add an image over here. So let's just go to image map and use clip browser. I'm going to add a scratchy roughness map here. So I just added the image and then I'm going to select this and turn it to roughness. And I've got this set up to texture and you'll notice there's no texture there because it defaults to UV mapping. So let me change this to cylindrical, put it on Y. And there it is. And it's much easier to do this in Moto and get this sort of OpenGL feedback and then add an override and translate all of those uh, coordinates into the Octane material than trying to set it up in Octane in the first place. So we just uh, wrap it around a few times there. Looks pretty good. There's some nice scratches. And then I'm just going to Control D duplicate this image. And I'm going to change the effect to roughness. And then I'm going to switch out that image to a normal map. And so we've got, uh, whoops, want that to be normal. So I've got one normal map and one roughness map. And now I'm ready to do my octane override. So when I do my octane override, it's going to translate all those material uh, coordinates, or those image coordinates, into the equivalent octane nodes down here. Let me just sort of scooch this up so you can see everything. And it's all going to be set up for me already. So here's my material. There's my two images, one going to normal and the other one going to roughness, right? So it's all set up for me. I just have to do what I did before to make this guy copper. So we'll do that. Repeat after me. Diffuse to zero. Boom. Step 104. To specular color to copper. Step 204. Index of refraction to one, step three of four, and I already have an image map on roughness. However, I actually want to invert that because right now uh, this image is just a stock image. It's really set up for glossiness, which is something a program like V-Ray uses. And so V-Ray uses glossiness instead of roughness. They're the exact same function. It's just that they're inverted. So a really bright, glossy image is actually a very dim, rough image. And what I want to do is invert my image here, my roughness image, within the uh, image node in Octane. So I invert this. That's more what I want. And so now it's a fairly shiny looking guy. Let me uh, go to the camera here and push in on, on Groot. So it's fairly shiny and then these scratches are fairly rough. And that's what I want. So let me push back a little bit. And I'll just uh, bring up the full HD version of that. So that's uh, Scratchy Groot. That's just two image maps, right? Just two image maps, normal and roughness. So let me swap those two images out for a couple of different images. It's a little bit um, more work here working in the nodal setup than it is in the shader tree. One of the things I do like about the shader tree is I need to switch these things out here in the normal and the, uh, in the uh, schematic. So I'm actually gonna grab a smudgy normal and drag that in. I'm gonna replace my smudge file name with that, right? Boom. So I went from scratchy to smudgy with a normal map, normal map. And then I need to go scratchy to smudgy with the roughness map as well, but this is, I'm going to invert it one more time. So switch that. And then I'm going to invert it because this is the way I think it looks a little bit better. And there we go. So this is sort of a smudgy metal. And again, you can mess with the uh, lighting and things like that to see how that plays with the smudginess. So yeah, sort of a smudgy, smudgy metal, corroded metal. 
I've got one more here. I've got a grungy one. So I've got a grungy normal and a grungy roughness. So swap out my roughness. And again, I think I'm going to, I believe this one, I want to invert it. Yeah, so I'm going to invert this guy again. However you like it, but I think I like it better inverted. And get my grunginess over here. And again, it was so much easier to set up all the mapping initially within uh, Moto and just translate that over to the Octane material. So there's my grungy map, right? Maybe I want to actually do a little more work on this. So I can actually multiply this grungy image, which is this image right here. I can multiply this grungy image against this copper image to get various levels of reflectivity. So I've got this, here's my copper color, right? So I can go over here and say new texture, mapping, grab a multiply node. There it is. Plug that into the first input. So that's my copper color. And then I'm just gonna grab my output of my grunge map, my roughness grunge map, and put that in the scale texture. And that's going to adjust the intensity of that copper color, right? So that black and white image is multiplying against the copper color and that's giving sort of high copper and low copper reflectivity amounts and plugging that back into specular. And so it looks even dirtier, right? A little bit dirtier. I may actually even want to, there's two ways to do this. Uh, if you want it inverted again, you can add, you know, just select that noodle there with the scale texture coming out and add a, uh, whoops, a new texture. We'll do mapping and we'll do a color correction. And it's because I had that node selected, that noodle selected, it just slips that node there in the right place in the middle between them. And I could do things like invert it and I can say increase the contrast, do some stuff like this if I really want to mess with it and get some you know, different, you know, grungy looking textures on there. So that's how you dirty up your metals. You got roughness, normal, or displacement or bump if you want to use those instead of normal, and uh, multiplying against your specular color. So that's it. Grungy Groot. Yum, yum.